لا وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبة في الله I believe this is our third sitting in our jalsa about aqeed and tawheed the sheikh left on left off he said he's talking about tawheed al uluhiyah he says as for what is designated for tawheed from the different terms and names then they are and so here he's talking about different terminologies that the scholars have deduced from the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with regards to the concept of tawheed with the, with the concept of tawheed uh, uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islamic monotheism. <clears throat> so he says, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. And this is the first type that we've been talking about. You know, or also known as Tawheed al-Ibadah, meaning that all the worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Tawheed is actualized on our limbs and on our tongues and in our heart, meaning that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We direct all worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mukhlisin lahuddin. Unlike a lot of the deviant sects, who, some of them, have went astray with regards to even this and they commit shirkiyat and they will say that they were doing tawheed they believe that they're ahla sunnati wal jama'ah which is gharib jiddan it's the strangest affair why because then you have old elder guys big white beards and that are supposed to be sheikhs supposed to be scholars molesting people i'm not making false claims uh in in the name of islam in the name of knowing some knowledge of the unseen, in the name of elevating the sisters or elevating the little boys in their understanding of Islam, when in fact they are the akhbath, khubatha, they are the most sickest and wickedest of evil innovators because you can only imagine someone who molests and then in the name of Islam tries to justify it through the Quran even. Or... They won't even use that. They just use purely their desires. And they taint the deen. They scar children and those children are scarred for life. And those children may even just leave Islam. Can you imagine being your, your Quran teacher or the sheikh that you trusted or the sheikh that you trusted, you entrusted with your children and he does evil, wicked sins to your children, exploiting your children? And on top of that, he's supposed to be a holy man, a saint. The people seek barakah from these guys. These men are the kind of guys that they claim that they're going to give you barakah in your spouse. And this is throughout documented, well documented in, in history. <clears throat> and from the, from the tongues of those who their grandfathers and so forth experience this. For example, in a Hadramot. We know, I, I talked to some of the mashayikh there <clears throat> that at the time were known as the Kibar Tulab al-Ilm in the Merkis, Merkis uh, Dar al-Hadith in Shehr. And one of them, he was telling me about how their grandfathers used to go out to the Badia. You know, they used to go out in the desert and they used to give before when they would marry, their virgin bride would have to be taken to the Sufi Sheikh who was known as some sort of Wali. Uh, and then he would basically christen her, for a lack of better terms. He would give the blessing so that she's now blessed, basically by consummating the marriage. So the sheikh would just sit back, get all these young virgins, deliver to them, enjoy, and then send them out to be with their husbands, their newly husbands. So that he would consummate actually in, before they would. I don't think we need to comment any further on how sick that someone who could claim Islam could, could, could go. That, you know, we don't even need to discuss that. We, you know, it's, it's beyond discussion and it, it, it's a sickness. So it shows how when people, they violate Tawheed, when they violate this Aqidah and their desires have stricken them, overcome them, overwhelmed them. But what I'm, the point I'm making, because deviation... This evil, this smunkar can happen to anyone. Meaning anyone can do sin. We all do sin. We all do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayra khatayin atawabun. All the children of Adam, they commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So we know that. But, to do it in the name of the deen, this is where these people are the most evilest and wickedest 
of vile creatures. So the Sheikh went on, he was talking about the Tawheed. He said, Tawheed al Uluhiya or Ilahiya, or as we said, uh, he mentions Tawheed al Ibadah, or al Ubudiyah, Tawheed al Qast, or Talab. Uh, so these are some of the names that the scholars of Ahl Sunnah have classified this, con- this aspect of Tawheed with. They gave it the name of uh, what, what could be translated as the servitude of Allah, uh, singling out Allah for worship, Tawheed al Ibadah, Tawheed of worship, monotheism of worship, uh, Ubudiyah, servitude, or Tawheed al Qast wa Talab, that this is the Tawheed of intent and want. And they require further explanation into those names. But I think the, the main point is just for us to get an idea of how the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they classified some of these terminologies, and you'll find this in their books, especially uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, Jami'an, that you'll find that they really use these terminologies quite a bit. But you'll find this also in classical books, even like Fiqh al-Akbar, by Imam Abu Hanifa, that you'll find that he uh, used the term, of course, Rububiyah. Uh, I can't recall, have to make Maraja, if he used the term Uluhiyah. And I believe he did. I believe you can find that because that I used that in my master's research with regards to talking about the origins of the classification of Tawheed. And uh, he also referred, he mentions, he said, Tawheed al Amal. Uh, the Tawheed of Action has also been called this because it is built upon sincerity of Allah for Allah alone. Then the Sheikh added, there are those who divide Tawheed into three. Uh, Tawheed al-Rububiyah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, wa Tawheed uh, al-Uluhiyah. And Tawheed al-Rububiyah meaning the Tawheed of Lordship. Lordship. Uh, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat meaning the divine names and attributes of Allah Azawajal that are unique to Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and we've talked about it in detail in many of our other lessons. Go to that for tafsil. And we mention Tawheed al Uluhiya. There are those who divide it into four categories. He said four parts. Uh, the pr- th- three previous ones, and they add Tawheed al Mutaba. Tawheed, basically, of following the Prophet. So some scholars even classify it as that. And again, these are classifications, but they all complement one another. And uh, meaning that a part of that Tawheed, because how are you going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by the way of the son of the Prophet sallallahu So this is why you have Tawheed al mutabah meaning that there's no other wasila, there's no other means. You can't start worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on your desires, based on another menhaj, based on another methodology, based on another means, or another wasila. But in fact, it has to be in accordance with the sunnah of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the last prophet and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> he says, then he says, Except that the well-known division in the books of Aqidah to Salafiyah is the division into three parts. So what we find is the scholars in contemporary times, uh, that they have kind of codified it, like you'll find in many of the contemporary uh, scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that they'll just mention Tawheed in those three categories, as we mentioned. Tawheed al-Rububiyah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. That, that's how they, they mention Tawheed. And these divisions have become known due to the people of knowledge investigating and researching of the evidences of the book and the sunnah. And they're looking into the ayat and the ahadith. Then he said, the different types of tawheed are connected. So whoever commits shirk, associating others with Allah and worship in one type of tawheed, then he has committed shirk in the other types. This is a very important qaida, and we'll stop there. Uh, after we quickly explain this. And that is that the scholars, they say that, for example, Tawheed, Tawheed al-Rububiyah, yastelzimu Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. 
What that means, Ahabu Tifillah, is that the scholars mention that when you believe in the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you understand Tawheed, uh, Arububiyya, the, the Tawheed of Lordship, you know, this category of monotheism, when you truly understand that, يستلزمو, it necessitates that you begin to worship Him and Him alone. So that's why Tawheed Arububiyya, يستلزمو, Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya. So that means Tawheed Arububiyya, the Tawheed of Lordship, it necessitates the Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya. How? Because, for example, if you believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth, then you will then, therefore, the conclusion, the next step, the, what this leads to, the, what can be inferred, what can be deduced, is that you will then, therefore, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So I think that is clear. I hope so. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good, forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.